Keys from the Golden Vault is out, and you wrote one of the adventures. What is that adventure? Yes, I wrote an adventure called A Fair on the Concordant Express. Uh, it is a ninth level train heist. And uh, what was the most fun about designing this particular adventure? Uh, I think the most fun about this adventure is that unlike other dungeons, this train that you're on as a DM, you actually get to customize it a little bit. So uh, there are a bunch of different train cars on this uh, planar locomotive. Um, and if you want, you like one train car over the other, you can take that train car and build your train with that one. And so you get a little bit of replayability if you want to try it twice or three times or however many times you want to ride a train. So the Dungeon Master has like kind of a choice of what to include in this You're kind of a linear dungeon, really. Like if you're kind of building it and switching it up, you can like create your own train. Yeah, so if you want to run a longer adventure or you really like all of the train cars there, you can string them together, make the Concord Express as long as you'd like. Or if you want, you can have an itty bitty short train and <laughs> try to get the session Cab done. The caboose one shot? Just the caboose, maybe the, the motor unit, uh, a couple <laughs> couplers in there, but yeah. It, was there anything else in terms of the design that you enjoyed? Yeah, so, so this is a uh, planar locomotive. So it is a, an interplanar locomotive. Um, so it, throughout the adventure, you are roaring through these uh, different gates. Uh, uh, soaring through different outer planes. So one adventure, they might be on a specific train car and they might be traveling through Mount Celestia and this calming presence, this celestial realm where some other group might be doing the same train car and they might be traveling through the nine hells and seeing devils and demons outside the train. Um, so the train goes through uh, pretty much all the outer planes. Uh, but in the adventure, we've, we've narrowed that to just a few with some magical effects that might affect the adventure. What is your advice for running this adventure? You've run it yourself a few times now. Oh but... yeah, I, I, ran it, I ran it just last week. Um, my advice is to... Um... By the way, spoilers, if you're watching this video and we're starting to talk about very revealing yes, elements, that's what yes. we're going to be doing. We're going to be giving advice for everyone about how to run this adventure. Yeah, so I think this adventure is a lot of fun. Um, particularly, I wanted um, an adventure. There's not an adventure in D&D where uh, you want to find out the true name of a powerful creature. Say your, your party has uh, you know, pissed off a demon lord or an archdevil or a pit fiend or something that's causing trouble for them. But I, what I really love about this adventure is this is a, hey, do you need a true name? Do you need a character who can give you that? And you want an adventure to do that because it's, you know, that's kind of a big thing, you know, looking for a name. What does that even look like? I mean, you could do something like cast legend lore, you could go to Candlekeep, or you might be able to go on the Concordant Express. So there, there's a bunch of true names at the, at the back of this adventure. Um, we have experimented a little bit with what a true name means. Uh, my favorite one on that list is the sound of four eggs sizzling in, a, in like a cast iron skillet, um, which you can either try to pronounce that or you can get four eggs. And I love the idea of these uh, adventurers, you know, pulling out a dozen eggs and beginning to crack them in like a fight with an archdevil or something. Right. Um, if I was going to give advice for running this adventure, of course, um, pick your favorite train cars. Uh, you might only get to run this adventure once and there are a lot of fun ones in there. Um, uh, other than that, um, you know, embrace the wackiness of it. Uh, these train cars are a little bit bonkers. Um, there are lots of modrons on the train. Uh, there's a murder mystery with an interesting detective. Uh, and there is this enigmatic character known as the stranger, uh, who it's you're trying to uh, basically jailbreak uh, in this. So this adventure is like 310 to Yuma meets... Mr. Magoo's Wonder Emporium, or whatever that movie is called. So, um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, you seem to enjoy it. You like trains in general. I love trains. <laughs> I have train bots. And, yeah, I, 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 was, I remember back when I was first uh, playing D&D, &D, uh, we used to joke with our DM that you know, he, he opposed us ever being in costume. Because he thought, he thought, as long as I'm not LARPing, we're only that nerdy. Uh, now I like costumes and I have little model trains and things, so I have just embraced the nerdiness. Uh, I'm going to get really into it. So yeah, again, yeah, if, if people do not want to get spoiled on this particular adventure, uh, we're going to spoil it right now. So yeah, yeah. we've already spoiled it plenty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's kind of delve into what is the background of this adventure. Um, so you are tasked with, um, uh, there is nothing more powerful than a name. 
right? You, you have your artifacts, you have, you know, different magic items, all kinds of things, but um, you are looking for a list of, of names, um, whether that's because your, um, your own party has angered something or you are being sent there by the Golden Vault to obtain uh, these specific true names. Um, there is an interplanar outlaw who is known as the Stranger. And the Stranger has angered, <laughs> you know, a couple of uh, uh, planar creatures, including um, an angel that appeared in uh, Journeys Through the Radiant Citadel. And so he is held on this train and bound for Mechanus, the plane of law where he is set to stand trial. Um, so your task is to board this train uh, and get those names from him, which probably will entail breaking him out. Um, so you go through uh, a bunch of different train cars on the way, um, depending on the ones that your DM picks, uh, and eventually you arrive at uh, a jail car, a, a little prison car where this uh, character is being held. Uh, there is someone defending him uh, that is uh, going to be a problem for the characters to overcome, and hopefully, yeah, you can get those names from him, uh, and maybe some others while you're at it. And there's some mention of the blood war in this. Yeah, so the Blood War, I mean, um, when you think about it, uh, what is more valuable um, in the eternal conflict between devil and demons than the true name of, you know, a Blood War general or a demon lord or something? I love the idea that um, something so small and taken for granted as a name could shift an interplanar conflict uh, in one direction or the other. I mean, if you knew you know, Zariel's true name, for example. Right. And how would that affect everything? What about Glitch the Quadrone? I, I, I love Modrons. <laughs> yes, same, same. <laughs> So anytime one's included, I am actively excited. Yeah, there are lots of wonderful Modrons in this adventure. Um, one of them is Glitch. Glitch is your um, quest giver. Uh, he is a former uh, uh, train worker on the Concordant Express who has gone rogue a little bit and works for the uh, Golden Vault. So uh, um, Glitch is the one who uh, basically gives you all the information about this train, gives you uh, a ticket to ride, and um, uh, directs you to where it is. Like, I have so many qu questions about the train, because you actually see art of this train, and it's laying down tracks. Yeah. And so it's, like you mentioned, it's interplanar. Like, what other things about this train are unique? Like so it's... the train is super cool in that, uh, you know, when you think about how does a train get across all of these realms? Well, you know, not, not every realm has a railroad <laughs> going through it. Uh, so the train actually lays and picks up its own track. So it has these little mechanical arms in the front which are laying down these floating train tracks. And then at the back of the caboose, uh, there are another uh, 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 array of mechanical arms picking up the track and absorbing it. Um, so the train actually has the maneuverability as it goes over, you know, a chasm in the nine hells or um, a, a windswept realm or, or honestly, like you could take the train anywhere you want it to go. If you want the train to go to the elemental plane of air, turns out the train is going to be just fine there. It will just be soaring across the sky. Uh, I don't know, like something out of Thomas the Tank Engine. What was fueling this train? Uh, this train is fueled by treasure. Um, DMs have to manage lots of uh, coinage in their games. Uh, so this is kind of my tongue-in-cheek way of the Modrons balancing the economy of the <laughs> multiverse, you know. Uh, don't we as DMs wish there was something that, you know, when there's too much treasure in a given place, you need some way of disposing it. And so these Modrons pile up this treasure and a cute little... Uh, Monodrone is shoveling uh, gold pieces and, and all kinds of other treasure just into the furnace of the, of the train. Why can't you just teleport into the train? Uh, well, the train is magical. Yeah. Uh, that would ruin the adventure for one. <laughs> you could just teleport <laughs> into the train. But the train is magical. Um, there are a lot of effects uh, that, uh, you know, this is a, a train operated by Modrons. It's made on Mechanus. Um, and the Modrons and the powers that be know that Many people are going to try and violate the laws of this train or, or get onto it without a ticket or try to, I don't know, break out a criminal that's held aboard it every once in a while. So it has all sorts of magical protections, um, uh, the, none the least of which is that you cannot teleport aboard this train. So you mentioned that there are multiple configurations for the train. Uh, yes. I'd lo love to go over some of the optional 
you know, train cars that people sure. can like slap into this adventure. Yeah, so the main cars, um, th this is actually a riff on uh, one of the first things I wrote back on the DMs Guild for a, a product called Hellbound Heists. Um, I, I made a train heist in hell um, and I liked this mechanic and I would have, I loved uh, it so much that I wanted it to be in a D&D book one day and it turns out it was still good. So, um, <laughs> uh, so what's cool about the train is that when you are uh, crafting it, the train needs three things. It needs uh, the jail car, which is what the characters are looking for. It needs the, the motor unit, the engine car, because the train has to go forward, and it needs the caboose, the end of the train where the characters are going to start. Um, in the adventure, there are a bunch of train cars, though, um, and DMs can slot the ones that they most enjoy in between. Um, there's an aquarium car, which is underwater, uh, which has a spout that you can pull out and drain the aquarium. Um, there is an abacus car uh, where there's a uh, adorable little modron called the Math Wizard, um, who is the the admirable admiral of Acubai. The uh, the um, you can go to his sanctum numerum and ask uh, very uh, a plethora of number based questions and watch how modrons calculate those questions. Or if you ask a question they can't calculate, uh, what happens to them? And uh, so you, we, we mentioned the aquarium car, we've got a cargo car, planetarium, passenger car, temple car. Passenger car, temple car. The passenger car is the star of this adventure, I feel like. Um, the passenger car is the one um, from which the adventure derives its name. Um, on this car, there is a bit of a murder mystery. Um, uh, I know Chris Perkins is a big fan of murder mysteries. Uh, he's mentioned that to me before. Um, and the one on this adventure is wonderful and involves a mind flare detective known as Ignatius Inkblot, um, who is on the case uh, and involves the characters uh, in the investigation. So how do the adventurers catch the train, get on the train? If, if you can't teleport on there, you have to get there somehow. So the caboose is actually uh, functions as the train's train station. So. Um, it, uh, the train basically drops off cars, swings by, and picks them up. So the characters are always going to start at the end of the train. Uh, DMs don't need to be worried about, you know, uh, adventurers trying to jump and catch the front of the train. Uh, it will just pick up and go from there. Uh, and there is a, uh, a wonderful Modron who acts as a ticketer on that car. There are a lot of different features. I'm seeing a list of, like, there's ceilings, doors, flight, lightning, Modrons everywhere, teleportation ward. That's kind of like the aesthetic of the train. These yeah, are all yeah. like things that protect the train, but lots of modrons as well. Uh, this seems like it's a little dangerous. Is there any 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 hurdles in moving from car to car, fall, taking falling damage, that kind of thing? You know, um, there are, of course, if you want, you can get run over by the train. Um, as delightful as that is, uh, if someone is thrown over the train, they might get sucked up underneath the train where all of those whirring arms and the train rolling along uh, and take a heaping pile of damage along the way. Um, but you can actually, like any good train adventure, be it Polar Express or Snowpiercer or any of your train-based adventures, um, you can go on top of the train cars uh, in some instances. Um, you can see on the map they have ladders outside some of them, and many characters are going to be curious, can I just climb and bypass this one? Well, yes, you will miss some of the fun that's in the train car, but uh, there are Modrons patrolling uh, the train, uh, wary to, uh, or standing ready to um, attack uh, any invaders. Uh, but there's also the dangers of the realms that the train goes through. Um, if you are climbing on top of a train and it is a train car and it's roaring through the Nine Hells, you might take a fistful of debris and whatever is flying in the skies. And then, of course, I mean, uh, DMs are, uh, you know, encouraged to not only experiment with the places the train goes to, but also, you know, add your own cars. You know, if you, if you want to add a car that, you know, is transporting something from one of the ad other adventures, like a big T-Rex or, or anything that the Mudruns might have, you, you can add that. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a really great list. Like, obviously there are strong winds if you're outside the train, yes. so that's, like, dangerous. But you have a list of planes and, like, you know, Elysium, you know, suddenly you can't make attack rolls. Yeah. If you are outside the train, you are deeply affected by that. You know, Mount Celestia, the Nine Hells, Pandemonium, 
and a bunch of others. This is really fun. I love interplanar adventures. So, yeah. And you get kind of all of it at the same time. You do. And, and there's, you know, there's a lot of little things, but, uh, you know, for this adventure, you take it at your own pace. If you want the characters to go through a new plane every time they leave a car, you can. If you want them to go through a plane once in the entire adventure and you want the whole thing to take place yeah. in the Nine Hells, you totally can. So, um, I, one of my favorite chapters in, in the uh, 2015 DMG is the cosmology chapter. Yeah. You get all the cool planner effects and you get a taste of those in this adventure. Is it Yisgard? How do we pronounce it? Cause I, I, think you know. I think it's Yisgard, but I've been told that you can't make fun of anybody who pronounces something wrong because they probably learned it from reading. Exactly, so. yeah. I, well, I mean, that's, this is a great one where basically the spectral warriors of Valhalla are flying around the train. Yes, <laughs> so yes. that might affect you pretty deeply. And then pandemonium as well. Not not a fantastic place to be. No, uh, howling yeah. darkness. Yeah, you can't hear anything. It's so loud. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I wonder, you know, those might be fun to affect things inside of the cars too. Like, eh, people are probably a little annoyed when you're going through pandemonium, depending on how long that stint is. So on like page 167, we actually we talk about the caboose. You've already kind of established oh, yeah. the caboose in this. Um, there's an abacus car. There's an abacus car, yes. It has it has a Modron on it known as the Math Wizard. That's right, you mentioned uh, the Math Wizard. I love the Math Wizard. The Math Wizard uh, might be tied for my favorite character in this adventure, uh, but yes, the Math Wizard uh, is prone to yelling calculate and and having his, <laughs> his gaggle of Modrons calculate things. So you can ask the Math Wizard basically anything that the answer to, uh, to that question is a number. So if you want to ask the Math Wizard you know, based on the data that Modrons have, how many siblings do I have? Uh, he will hit calculate, and based on the data that these Modrons have collected, he'll give you an answer. So that might be a cool opportunity for a DM to drop something yeah. that the player doesn't know. You know, if, if they think they, they lost a member of their family who's actually still alive, right. you know, this that... They might learn that from the dopey little math wizard <laughs> on this guy. A major plot point yeah. for your overarching campaign yeah. uh, can um, be revealed in this adventure. That's fun. Or, you know, they ask about how much money someone has, and they might learn that person has, has a lot more. And there's also some cool equations on the chalkboard. Oh, yeah. So when you look at the chalkboard, you can get, like, inspiration. You can get you all can get kinds all... of different effects. Yes. I mean, the, the equations of the multiverse written upon the chalkboard uh, carry their own wonders. So there are a lot of fun things you can get just from studying that. Uh, it's a good lesson to remind DMs to never stop learning <laughs> um, and enjoy what math can do for you in real life. Right, uh, so the, yeah, the players, uh, if you're running this as a dungeon master, the players can get a lot of like benefits from just yeah. looking at the chalkboard. From studying, yeah. yeah, and I think that fits. Yeah. I like studying. That's perfect. Uh, is there, what, what's exciting about the aquarium car, do you think? I think the aquarium car is just cool that it's underwater. Uh, I mean, it's, it's neat. Uh, with all the, with all the planner things here, um, it's, it's fun. I think it's one of the coolest looking cars, um, uh, because it's, it's one that you can look at the outside and see water sloshing about in it. Um, I also love, you know, there's the, the, the idea that you can unscrew the cork and let the water out. <laughs> uh, uh, but there's a lot of cool things there. Uh, we've got a pre-bell war machines rest in this uh, the, the actual cargo car. So there's a bunch yeah. of items. In yes, yes. The uh, the cargo car has a taste of the nine hells in it as well. Um, so if you play Descend to Avernus, uh, you might be familiar with what's inside, uh, as well as uh, a neat little Easter egg in the glove compartment. Uh, that is fun to try. Perfect. And planetarium car. Yes, the Planartarium. Uh, oh, the plan <laughs> Planartarium. I feel like I just like, you know, when you read something, you just like, did you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, our editors struggled with that one. <laughs> I heard it was taken out, but back in, taken out, but back in. <laughs> this is not a real word, but it is a real word in this adventure. So the Planartarium, um, you know, not everybody's going to be familiar with, with the planes and cosmology of D&D. &D. Um, you know, a lot of campaigns don't touch on that um, very much. Um, so, so the Planartarium um, has a Modron on it known as, uh, well, hologram of a Modron, uh, named Cosmo, um, who can teach you about uh, the different planes that the train might be going through. Um, so it's a cool little educational uh, stop on the adventure. Um, 
And so that brings us kind of like, we, we go from there, we've got, um, there's a donation tube? What is the there's donation, a donation tube? tube? It's for donations, and it's for <laughs> donations only. If you want to donate to the car and learn about the planes, and uh, you donate to the tube, and then you, you might get to meet Cosmo. But if you put something you're not supposed to in the donation tube, or you try to take your money back, right. you might learn what the plan architectarium <laughs> car can do to you. That's perfect. So once we get to the passenger car, this is kind of where the mind flare detective yes. kind of comes into play. I, I, if there's been a murder, there must be suspects. There are suspects. There are three um, planar suspects. There is a, uh, a dragonologist who is uh, looking for something known as a time dragon, which might or might not exist. Uh, there is a, uh, a Cambion, uh, and there is also uh, an Azure, uh, you know, the little uh, dwarf-like creatures from the um, uh, elemental plane of fire, I believe. Um, uh, but yes, the, the game is afoot on this car um, when you enter uh, the Mind Flayers there. And, and a, a, a poor little uh, Asimar named Quintus has been killed. Um, so you can, you, know, you can do all things that you would expect uh, in a murder mystery. You can study the body. You can interrogate suspects. You can start to rule out things. And there might be a couple twists and turns involved in that adventure. That's per perfect. And there's a lot of spells that you can kind of use. There's a lot of spells, yeah. You can speak with that and you can see uh, you know, yeah. how that works. Have like, we seen in the movie, there are lots of ways to get information out of a corpse. Yes, many ways to get information out. And, you know, as an adventurer at ninth level, there are a lot of tools at the character's disposal to, to solve um, mysteries such as this. Um, and some of them are pretty straightforward and others are not. But, um, uh, uh, you know, Chris Perkins, who developed this adventure, um, uh, you know, I learned a lot from him about murder mysteries and the way that he, uh, you know, helped bring this to its full potential. Uh, because murder mysteries are, are tough to write. Uh, I think out of genres for adventure writers, uh, intrigue and mystery, I think, are the, the two underestimated uh, genres that just end up needing more space than you often anticipate. And uh, because there's, there's so many different parts that, that it can break down or you need to account for. Uh -huh. Otherwise, you leave the DM kind of out in the cold, you know, like... If you don't have a section on Speak With Dead in your ninth level yeah. and somebody casts it, what do you do? So that's why there's a lot of uh, kind of prep in there for the DM, lots of sections that they can reference to. Uh, you know, I anticipate there are going to be dozens of ways people solve this adventure or, or, or this aspect of the adventure. Uh, just last week, someone did it through speaking tongues. Um, so uh, there's lots of cool ways you can walk through it. We've got you know, a section on specifically searching the cabins and getting clues. Yes. Yeah. You can you can rifle through uh, the passengers' things. Each each passenger on this car has a uh, a little Modron valet, uh, and Modrons normally can't speak common. So um, when you talk to the Modrons, they might be helpful and they might be not so helpful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Turns out monodrones are only good at doing one thing at a time. So uh, don't try to make them do two things. Uh, I might be a monodrome. Yeah, uh, same, same. So, and uh, what are some fun ways to solve this entire mystery? Because uh, well, you, you do outline all of this. As you said, this is like a very tough genre to get right. And so, yeah. and D&D &D has a lot of options how to solve things. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can get clues through speaking with Dad. You can get clues with, you know, good old-fashioned insight roles. Um, you can, you know... If you have a warlock that can see through things, you know, they have the, the that, uh, oh gosh, I don't remember, but the one that lets them see through yeah. dungeon walls, and <laughs> yeah. stuff. I think it's like ghost eyes or something, yeah. um, uh, they can uh, begin to look through people's things. Um, and when all else fails, um, maybe your mind flayer pal uh, can help you out, as he is very motivated to help you succeed uh, on this case. Uh, he has solved many others like it in the past, um, so... Uh, he's a, a, a good ally in this. You do kind of get to, to solve the, the mystery of this murder. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and eventually get to the jail car. Yes. Uh, is, is the person that you're looking for the only one in the jail car? No, there, there are uh, eight cells on the jail car. Um, the jail car is the biggest uh, car on the train. It is a, is a two-floor uh, uh, car um, and might have a couple of ways in. Uh, as any good uh, heist, there might be a skylight somewhere involved. Um, but uh, the, the jail car is guarded by an angel uh, named Omid. 
um, who comes from a distant land um, but is no less a threat. And good luck lying <laughs> to the angel uh, as uh, this type of angel knows a lie when it hears one. Um, there are several uh, cells on there uh, that hold other prisoners, um, uh, some from other realms, uh, more like the lower planes. Uh, and then there is a, an adorable accidental uh, uh, inmate in one of the cells um, who may or may not have accidentally locked themselves inside. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really do love this adventure. This is so fun. And then that leads us eventually to the stranger themselves. Yes, the stranger is awesome and aptly named. Uh, as someone who knows the power of names and collects them, uh, they don't have a name of their own, or at least if they do, they don't reveal it. Um, I, I, if you like Westerns, uh, you will love the stranger. Um, you know, has all the best parts of outlaws uh, in there, but with a D&D &D tilt, um, which is a lot of fun. Uh, you also, I, you know, this is very common, like there's also advice for like, it, once this adventure concludes, you, you get all the information you need, you get the true name, yeah. possibly. How do you continue the adventure from there? Well, one, you can run the adventure after it in the book, <laughs> or um, you can see what the power of a name really is like. Um, once, once characters have freed the stranger, um, you know, they might find out that the Modrons are not happy that you broke somebody off their train. If they, if they know it was you and you've interacted with enough, enough people, you know, you might have all sorts of, you know, inexonerable creatures uh, <laughs> coming to hunt you down. Or um, maybe when somebody knows you know their name, they're not happy about it. Um, because, you know, once you learn that name, you know it. <laughs> and the only way to get somebody to not know something is either to wipe their mind or yeah. a darker turn. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you, if you learn the name of a, of a powerful demon or devil, maybe they come hunt you down. So uh, I think this, uh, this adventure you know, is cool in that regard. Um, it will show players the power of those names and uh, the liability that comes with them. Uh, when I ran it, one of the things people asked is, well, what did he do exactly? What did this guy do that he's here? It's like, well, sometimes it's not what you did. It's what you know. Uh, Very true. Uh, any parting advice for Dungeon Masters listening to this video and this audio? Uh, you should um, embrace your love of trains. Look up <laughs> trains. Learn things about trains. Trains are awesome. Uh, and don't be afraid to railroad the players a little bit. <laughs> Literally. Literally. I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had, I had to get one in there. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's perfect.